In this video, we're looking at what the RW icon can do in Google Docs and Google Slides. When you click on it, it expands down and gives you all of these options that we'll run through. And to hide it, you simply click it again. To find out more, you can click on this help icon and it will bring up the support for the read and write for Google Chrome extension, as it's called. So let's get started. First of all, we have here a prediction feature. So if I was to put my cursor here and at the end of the word dog create a space and then hit the prediction, what's going to happen is for students who struggle to create ideas, the predictor will suggest what word could be added next and it uses simple grammatical logic to do that. So the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog and the the first place two and and you, you get the idea there this could go anywhere so I'll just turn off the prediction and I think you can see how it can be used there also you might have noticed that whenever words are hovered over the uh, this software actually speaks it back to you so that's great for students who struggle for students who struggle with literacy so let's move on to this next tool here this is a simple dictionary so wherever the cursor is hit the dictionary and it will create a, a list of definitions for it. What's also useful is you'll see these playback heads and when we click on those, document, it reads them out aloud as well. So this is great for students who have difficulty with literacy. Let's close that. What we also have is a picture dictionary which is great for literacy as well. So if I wanted to look at a picture of a fox, I can click there, go to picture dictionary, and we have an example there. Depending on the word, you might get a lot of examples or only one. Let's see what we get for word. So you can see a range of quite generic, uh, however, very useful visualizations for what these words mean. The next set of features, playback, pause and stop, is to read. So if I click here and press the playback button, it will start to speak the text. In other words, the first number specifies the number of pairs. We can pause and we can stop. And also, if we go into our settings cog, we can change the speed and the voice as well. And also modify the continuous reading. So that's how those uh, options work there. The next feature is for screenshots. So say this was actually an image from a web page and it wasn't text that was typed. We can also read that back too. So as a demonstration, I'll simply select this element here. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog and lazy dog. The quick brown fox... So you get the idea there. If that was a screenshot, it would do its best to interpret the text as speech. This next option is, I think, a remarkable feature, and it's called an audio maker. So if I want to convert this paragraph to an audio file, we select it, and then we hit this button, and it generates an, an MP3 file that we can play back or use in other software. I won't do it with that because it's quite repetitive. Let's use this next one. So I'm going to select that paragraph and now I'll hit this speech make audio maker. It's going to process that and create a downloadable file. And there it is. And I'll open this up and we'll listen to this audio file that's been created from text. In other words, the first number specifies the number of paragraphs you want to insert. The second number specifies the number of sentences you want to include in those paragraphs. So you get the idea. That's a very unique feature. The next one is also highly useful. So if students need to focus in more on what they've written or what they're reading, then you can use this isolator here. So it's a screen mask and it simply filters out what's not in their immediate view. Wherever the cursor is, that's where the mask um, does not appear. And it's great to isolate um, a large document of text. To turn it off, you simply go back to the top and click it again. Now this here will start the dictation features and this just uses the standard Google um, voice typing feature. So if I go to the end of this document and I create a new paragraph, 
a new paragraph, I'll now go to my uh, talk and type feature. It's going to ask to allow the microphone. And now as I speak, the software will pick up my voice, full stop. And we just click that to stop it. So that's a great feature that we have been aware of for some time, and it's now integrated into this set of tools. Say we want to translate what we've got. We can do that as well. So I'll close that button, select this text, and we'll go to translation. Now you did notice before that French was the language of translation. So as I go through and click on the words, we can see the translation uh, examples there. And again, if we want to hear them, Parler. we have those translations in place, which are quite useful. The next feature here is for highlighting. So if this was a document from a web page or just a student trying to go through and identifying um, particular patterns in their own writing, what we can do is turn on the highlighter and we'll highlight just that for instance and over here let's highlight that let's change colors and highlight this and we'll highlight this with another color uh, we can go through and scrub out our highlights so I can go like that to clear a highlighted section select it and scrub it uh, what we can also do is collect them together so I'll show you what this looks like so let's collect the blue and the purple ones, hit OK, and a new document will show just what we have extracted from our highlighting. Finally, we have this feature here which is called Practice Reading Aloud, and what I'll show you here is this sample. So if you're using Word 95 or lower, so I'm just going to select that text and use this. What this does is open a new tab and it copies in the text which we can now use to practice reading. So click the record button and click stop, click play to listen back to how you did. So this is great for students who need to hear their own voice before they do a presentation. So first of all we start the recording, allow the microphone. If you're listening Sorry, if you're using Word 95 or lower, and now I'll hit stop, and now I can play it back to myself. If you're listening, sorry, if you're using Word 95 or lower, and now I'll hit stop. So you can hear that it's slowed down. It's actually decreased the speed of my voice, and, and those settings can be adjusted. However, what's useful is a, a student gets to hear their own voice back, which can be quite beneficial. And you can, of course, send what you've done to your teacher, which is a useful feature. To cancel out of this, you simply close this tab and you go back to your document. So that's a new feature that's just been added. And as you can see, these are very powerful features that make using a Google Doc much more than simply working with the document itself.